So welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the investiture of Dr. Nicolau Panu as the Peter V. Santes Professor in Greek Literature and Language. It is my pleasure to extend a special welcome to Peter and Despina Santes, Dr. Panu, and their family and friends, including Calliope Balatsuka, representing the Consulate General of Greece in New York. Please join me in welcoming you. While today's ceremony continues a century-old English academic tradition of endowing professorships, it is the ancient Greeks who formed our ideals of classical scholarship, who really deserve credit for this celebration. The famous Greek philosophers, Pythagoras, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and more, are among the most influential people in history because they invented both philosophy and science. Democritus, one of the first advocates of democracy, equality, and liberty, was also the first person to advance the hypothesis that all matter is composed of small invisible particles called atoms, anticipating the discoveries of modern physics. He wrote, nothing exists except atoms and empty space. Everything else is opinion. <laughs> Aristotle su studied a wide variety of subjects, including science, ethics, government, physics, and politics. He was one of the first people to try and classify animals and to study psychology. And he taught us that it is the mark of, of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Art, literature, and poetry also reached new heights of innovation and development during the Hellenistic era. In architecture, the classical styles were further refined and augmented with new ideas like the Corinthian order. And in geometry, Euclid's elements became the standard all the way into the 20th century. And the work of Archimedes on mathematics, along with his practical inventions, became influential and legendary. It is this Hellenic tradition of rigorous investigation of the hard sciences, the social sciences, and the humanities that we seek to emulate, promulgate, and celebrate here at Stony Brook University. It is not only fitting, it is important that at Stony Brook, one of the top 62 research universities in the country, known for our emphasis on the study of science, technology, technology engineering, mathematics, and medicine, that we also educate and nurture students with the values of Hellenic civilization. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our truly new, as of last Monday, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Michael Bernstein. Dr. Michael Bernstein. <laughs> Dr. Bernstein has four degrees in economics from Yale and previously served as a professor of history and dean of arts and humanities at the University of California, San Diego and as the provost and chief academic officer at Tulane University. He is known throughout the country as a person of high character and integrity with an outstanding record as a scholar and academic leader. Please join me again in welcoming him. Thanks so much, uh, President Stanley, and uh, thank all of you for being here today. This is a very special occasion, uh, both for the Santis family and, of course, for Nikos Panu himself, who is the inaugural holder of the Peter V. Santis Professorship in Greek Literature and Language. Uh, I have a couple of responsibilities here this afternoon. I will try to be uh, efficient in my remarks. My, my first responsibility is to share with you some comments from Nikos' department chair, Robert Harvey. Robert Harvey is Distinguished Professor of Cultural Studies and Comparative Literature here at Stony Brook. He is the chair of Nikos' department. He could not be here this afternoon, which he very much regrets, because he is participating in an interview with a leading French television station to explain yesterday's election results <laughs> here in the United States. 
I think he will be involved with that activity for the next 162 days. Um, Robert really regrets not being here, Nikos. He asked me to share uh, the following words with all of you. No one deserves more than Nikos Panu to occupy the Peter V. Santis Endowed Professorship in Hellenic Studies. I was already convinced of this from a professional standpoint when Stony Brook had the vision and the wonderful opportunity to hire Nikos in 2014. And while that conviction has only deepened over the course of these two ensuing years, I can now say that I have had the privilege to get to know the person named Nikos Panu, an exquisite individual. Nikos is as kind as he is urbane, as caring as he is brilliant. He knows best whence came those qualities. Whether Nikos is writing on tyranny in the Byzantine Empire, a most apposite topic, I think, uh, <laughs> delivering an absolutely captivating lecture on the supercharged drama of the Bacchae, or passionately discussing with a colleague the postmodern staging of an early opera, this polyglot polymath is a treasure. Those are Robert's words, not mine. <laughs> I was and I remain humbled and honored that Nikos chose our department and Stony Brook as the most propitious home for the research that he does and that he aspires to do. Very happy to share those remarks with you, Nikos, from your department chair. Let me say that uh, I know this is a very, very special moment in your career, and I want to extend to you on behalf of the entire academic affairs team at the university, and of course all of the academic leadership, our abiding respect and excitement for you in this moment. And I also want to share our enduring gratitude and thanks to the Santis family who makes this moment possible and who, through their commitment and support and confidence in us, ensures that Hellenic Studies will be a jewel in the crown of Stony Brook for generations, generations to come. Let me also just share briefly some comments about the significance of an endowed chair uh, to remind all of us about what these chairs mean in the world of higher education and especially at a, at a singularly excellent research university like ours. Uh, I like to refer to the three R's. I don't mean reading, writing, and arithmetic. I mean recognition, reputation, and resources. These chairs offer exquisite recognition to superb scholar teachers in their fields. The standards for appointment to these chairs are very, very high. That is indeed why this is such a special day for Nikos to celebrate and honor his accomplishments. Obviously, the chair provides resources both in the concrete sense of undergirding the work that Nikos does, but also hopefully providing him opportunities to pursue new research agendas, to support graduate students, to mentor their accomplishment, and to ensure that the field of Hellenic studies prospers indeed across generations. And finally, <laughs> reputation. These chairs are named for a reason. That inscribes permanently the commitment, in this case, of a family and their desire to ensure that Hellenic Studies remains part of our university mission forever. But the other name that's inscribed here is Nikos Panu, who is the first holder of this chair. And 150 years from now, when we have another ceremony like this, I won't be here, of course, Nikos probably will be here. <laughs> we will install a new holder of this chair, and he or she will reflect with gratitude and pride that they hold a chair once held by Nikos Panu. That's another thing that these chairs do, the long chain of us all, right? So again, I want to celebrate you, Nikos, and say congratulations, and I want to celebrate the Santis family, and thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all you've done for us today. And now it's my very happy duty to introduce Sasha Kopp, the Dean of Arts and Sciences here at Stony Brook. Welcome, everyone. Uh, it's really a great treat to celebrate today uh, the appointment of Nikos Panu as our endowed chair in Hellenic Studies. Nikos joined the faculty in 2014 as an assistant professor of comparative literature and the Peter V. Santes Endowed Professor in Hellenic Studies. He received his PhD from Harvard and held a postdoctoral fellowship at Princeton before uh, holding a position as visiting professor at Brown and then coming to Stony Brook. You've already heard that Dr. Pernu's interests include Byzantine, modern Greek, Middle Eastern literatures and cultures, 
as well as Orientalism, Film Studies, and the History of Emotions. He's written rather poignant topics for, for today, including uh, issues of tyranny, and, and uh, his most recent work is called How to Do Kings with Words, Power and Propaganda in the Ottoman Balkans. The book examines the way sovereignty was represented and theorized by Orthodox rulers in the Balkans and had a major impact on the geopolitical, institutional, and cultural configuration of the, that area at a crucial point in its history. Research like Dr. Panu's is an important part of what we do in the College of Arts and Sciences. In addition to groundbreaking new discoveries about the nature of the universe or new technological or clinical innovations that better hu the human condition, scholars like Dr. Panu help us understand the cultures of the world and teach us the lessons of history. As we know, in, in, in an incredibly complex global climate, cultures, religions, governments, philosophies, and systems of power are a driving force for peaceful relations or geopolitical conflict. Dr. Panu's scholarship will have much to teach us from the lessons of history. This endowed professorship also supports the College of Arts and Sciences mission to engage with and enrich the community that supports us, and for that we're most grateful. With this endowed professorship, we look forward to celebrating the rich traditions of the Greek and Greek American community and sharing its contributions to Long Island New York and the United States. Greece, after all, is the birthplace of our democracy. It's our privilege to acknowledge Peter Santez and his family, as well as the many members of the community who contributed to this professorship. And I want to particularly recognize one of our faculty, Professor Stella Circa, who actively engaged the many members of our community in creating this position. Our gratitude to all of you endures, and our greatest hope is that this endowed professorship will spearhead a rich future of scholarship and celebration of cultures and ideas in the years to come. And now I'd like to invite President Stanley back up to the podium for the formal installation. Dr. Panu, could you please join me at the podium? It is my distinct privilege to confer upon you the title of the Peter V. Santes Professor in Greek Literature and Language and present you with this certificate, which reads, Stony Brook University proudly recognizes your outstanding contributions in teaching and research, honors your exemplary service to the field of Hellenic studies, and acknowledges the distinction you bring to the university as the inaugural Peter V. Santes Professor in Greek literature and language. Established in 2013 through the generosity of Peter V. Santes, this professorship enables the university to recognize a world-class scholar and educator in the Department of Cultural Studies and Comparative Literature. Presented at this ceremony of investiture, November 9th, 2016. Thank you very much for this extraordinary uh, honor. And thank you all for being here on this rainy early November afternoon. Um, I'd like to start with a confession. When uh, Nicole Tennant, who is responsible for all this, contacted me to let me know that I would have to give a talk at some point in the course of tonight's event, I wrote back to her asking whether 45 to 50 minutes would be enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking that I was being asked to give a presentation based on my research on the things that I'm currently working on. That is both what I do best and what I love doing. Of course, Nicole was quick to inform me 
not without a perplexed smile on her face, I'm sure. <laughs> but my speech should not exceed 10 minutes, 15 <laughs> at the most. 15 at the most. Since the entire ceremony, including the speeches of all the other speakers, would take about an hour. That set me straight. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> both for showing me the way to vital brevity and for making everything happen in such a smooth and impeccable way. So, I do not intend to keep you long, and I certainly have no intention of repeating some of the things that uh, one is always tempted to say about the importance of Greek history and culture, or about the relevance and crucial role of Hellenic studies in the curricula of universities that aspire to provide their students with a solid and comprehensive education. There is a great deal of truth in all this, but what I'm really interested in, by nature and inclination, is action, not words. And the truth is that what happened here at Stony Brook is the result of a series of extraordinary actions that required inspiration, zeal, commitment, generosity, and a lot of hard work. Indeed, at a time when the humanities is being increasingly marginalized, to say the least, in universities across the country, the establishment of an endowed chair in Hellenic studies is an event and an opportunity of singular importance. But it is also true that without a classics department, for instance, or without a critical mass of people with proper training, background, languages, and specialization, or without the collections, facilities, and initiatives that other universities foreground in order to attract the interest of both students and scholars, without such basic things, cultivating and promoting Hellenic studies can be a fairly challenging task. I sometimes catch myself thinking of that solitary snow leopard I once saw in a BBC documentary desperately trying to find food for its young in the vast, steep, windswept expanses of some mountain range in the depths of Nepal. That is why, I think, we now have to direct all our efforts, and with a great sense of urgency, I might add, to the creation of a robust, radiant, magnetic center of Hellenic studies that will serve as a hub for the study of Greek society, history, politics, and culture, and will become an indispensable, inevitable, if you wish, point of reference, both within Stony Brook and beyond. The vision is here, and so is the will, the determination, the expertise. What is lacking is resources, money, to put it simply. Were I a millionaire, what I would be sharing with you right now, to name but one thing, is photographs of our new, impressive, as much as inviting, Hellenic center space. Alas, I am not a millionaire. But those of you who are, <laughs> do give it a thought. <laughs> this is precisely the kind of thing that can make a difference when it comes to the impact and future of Hellenic studies. It is the gesture, the contribution, the decisive action that can play a key role in sustaining, fertilizing, promulgating, and propelling the unique momentum that the establishment of the Peter V. Zandes chair has set in motion. But still, what happened here at Stony Brook, let me say it again, is already quite extraordinary. In fact, I vividly remember that when the position was announced and advertised some time ago, it triggered rare excitement among the people in my field, and understandably so. For a long time, 
everyone was talking about the new big thing that put this extraordinary Long Island University on the map of Hellenic studies devotees around the world. In conferences, gatherings, dinner parties and receptions, in airports and on trains, viva voce and by email, people could not help wondering about how it all happened and about who will get the job. Well, the person who was lucky enough to get the job is here tonight, right in, right in front of you. And he has many people to thank for the trust, the honor, and the privilege. President Stanley, for one, and not just for the wonderful introduction. The previous Dean of Arts and Sciences, Nancy Squires, and our current one, Dean Kopp, as well as the previous Provost, Dennis Asanis, and our brand new one, uh, uh, Provost Bernstein, whom I would like to publicly welcome and with whom I look forward to having a long and fruitful collaboration. Kane Gillespie, Jane MacArthur, Rebecca Baer, Christina Georgiou, and everyone who has been involved, one way or another, in the establishment of the Tzandes Chair and the management of the endowment. The New York chapter of the American Foundation for Greek Language and Culture, for all their efforts and fundraising. My students, graduate and undergraduate, who have been spoiling me with their brilliance and their affection. And my wonderful colleagues throughout the campus, and especially in the Department of Cultural Studies and Comparative Literature, which I call home. Isabella Kalinowska Blackwood, Sophie Reinhard Leroy, Patrice Ganang, Andrea Fedi, Tim Westphalen, Tim August, Mireille Rebez, Simone Brioni. It is such a pleasure to know you, let alone work with you. I would finally like to extend my deepest gratitude for their unfailing guidance support and friendship to Robert Harvey, distinguished university professor, cherished mentor, guardian angel, chair and captain of my department. To E.K. Tan, associate professor of comparative literature and cultural studies, director of the Confucius Institute, and simply the best in what he does in what he brings, in what he stands for. And to Mary Moran Luba, our invaluable department administrator, and so much more than that. And of course, from the bottom of my heart, a very big thank you to Professor and Vice Provost Stella Tsirka, the dedicated, the indefatigable, the very soul of all things Greek at Stony Brook. And to the Tzandes family, and especially to Mr. Peter Tzandes, the most fervent lover of Greece and its heritage that I have ever met. Without them, what is would not have been. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Panoon. I, I think you said more in 15 minutes than I've heard many people say in 15 hours, so, so thank you. Um, I want to echo something that Professor Panu said, and that is um, we have about 20% of our budget is covered by New York State. Um, and that's actually generous compared to some states, so I, I don't want you to think I'm complaining about it. But it makes it difficult to provide a high quality uh, education and a great experience for our students. So in this age of declining state and federal support for research and for public institutions in general, philanthropy really provides a margin of excellence and is critical to our ability to achieve our mission, which is why I'm so grateful for the investment of the Santes family 
and many others in Stony Brook University and for their confidence in us. As you will read in your program, Peter Sante's journey to the United States from his native Ikaria, a Greek island in the Aegean Sea when he was 21. Like many of our students, he arrived in this country speaking no English, but with a strong desire to succeed. And as he made his way in the United States, he never forgot his roots, nor the people in his life whose help made so much possible for him. Through his work with the American Foundation for Greek Language and Culture, Peter Santes became a philanthropist, impacting scholarship across the area. Here at Stony Brook, the Santes family endowments for this professorship and for a scholarship enabling students to study abroad in Greece are already making an impact which will continue for generations to come. Peter, you are quoted as saying, when I learned English, I found Hellenism embedded in the language. I wonder if you were thinking perhaps of the origin of the word philanthropy from the Greek word for love of humanity in the sense of caring, <coughs> nourishing, developing, and enhancing what it means to be human. It is clear to me that Peter Santes truly epitomizes what it means to be a philanthropist. We are so grateful that you have chosen to link your family's legacy to ours. Peter and Despina, could you please join me at the podium? It is my great privilege to present you with a certificate which reads, with deep gratitude, Stony Brook University recognizes your extraordinary generosity and splendid support of excellence in teaching, research, and scholarship reflected in your establishment of the Peter V. Santes Professorship in Greek Literature and Language presented at a ceremony investiture November 9th, 2016. Beloved Orients, the dream became reality. Ladies and gentlemen, your presence here today testifies to that. Years in preparation for the unending effort of the American Foundation for Greek Language and Culture Committee under the leadership of our lady Stella Chirka, professor of the uh, pharma, uh, pharmacology in the Stony Brook University, and the spontaneous embrace from the elite leaders for such an addition of the Hellenic cultural teachings in this prestigious University of Stony Brook has reached its field of fruition. To you, Dr. Stanley, President of the Stony Brook University, we bow with thanks and appreciation. Ladies and gentlemen, when a lady by the name Ekaterini Spanou Haralambu Batuyos 
spats an orphan boy, remnant of the devastating Second World War, opens her warm motherly arms, takes him as an addition to her family, sends him to elementary school, then high school, and after graduation, brings him to America. How can you forever show your love and remembrance to you, cancions, constantly uh, stirring you, motivating you to do something in her name forever? The proper fitting decision of the P.B. T. Sanders family was to dedicate the professorship in Greek literature and language, as well as the upcoming Hellenic Center in her love and memory for the energy towards philanthropy and education. Although she is not physically amongst us, nevertheless, her presence heralds a good gift towards philanthropy, philanthropic conditions, and promotion to education. Again, a warm handshake to the elite of the Stony Brook University, and to you all honoring today's event. May this professorship be the beginning of a large, vibrant, scholarly Hellenic Center at Stony Brook University, where lots of students, scholars, and people from our community collaborate and learn Hellenism from each other. That's my short speech, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and I wish all of you, to all of you Happy holidays. That was, that was wonderful. And, and thank you so much again, uh, Peter uh, and Despina, for your extraordinary generosity and, and for your family for all of your support. This concludes our program. Again, thank you so much for attending. We very much appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the rest of this uh, very interesting day. Thank you. Thank you.